was browsing around the internet and I came across a video which presented an opinion that I did not agree with. So I did what any other person would do and prepared a rational response. Oh my god! Look at this person a fag! Freaking straight fag! And then I thought to myself, to insult a gay person, should I call them straight? Also, we need an epithet for straight. Mm, I'm going to pick frond. Well, a faggot is a bunch of sticks and a frond is like a leaf. And they both start with F and, um, okay, I'll get on with this video about drugs. Now, here is the point of contention. I've always viewed people who use substances as weak. Click the link to watch the full video, but this one sentence is what I want to discuss. Now for the rest of this video, I'm going to make the assumption that this is referring to people who are addicted to drugs, not people that use recreationally a few times and are okay with it. Now let's get into the discussion. The crux of this whole issue is actually, is addiction a medical disease? But before we can answer that, we need to answer a deceptively difficult question. Are you in control of your behaviour? As a behavioural neuroscientist, I have spent my life trying to answer this damn question. Mm, okay, I'm being a bit dramatic, but whatever. And so, I don't know the answer. But the question is, can we have a disorder of behaviour? Is here we're talking about a disorder of drug taking behavior now one of the first things I want to do when I came to YouTube is promote the idea that mental illness is just like any other physical illness why is there so much stigma on mental illness and its treatment compared to other physical condition well you see mental illnesses are a sickness of the mind and we are our minds this is well this is I believe what propels the stigma uh, because if our minds are sick our core essences are sick uh, but if our hearts are sick our hearts are sick we don't really regard ourselves as a heart like we do a mind I hope that's all making sense we're supposed to be in control of our minds and we're supposed to be in control of our behaviour. So can these things really get sick? Now let's see. Uh, let's discuss a couple of illnesses here. We've got brain injury. Is that an illness? Uh, different types of dementias. Are they illnesses? Schizophrenia. Bipolar disorder. Major depressive disorder. Anorexia nervosa. Leave me nervosa. Um, how about substance dependence disorder? Now, the order that I've said these illnesses in is important as they represent a choice gradient. The dementias have known physical correlates. You can open up the brain, you can look at the amyloid plaques, you can look at the Lewy bodies and go, that this person has a dementia. You can't get someone with substance dependence, chop open their brain and go, Hey look, I can see the smack addiction. Actually, with research we're getting there, but I'll discuss that later. Whether or not substance dependence is a choice or an illness, there's no definite yes or no on this. A segment from a video called Pleasure Unwoven, and you can click the link here, uh, discusses this very nicely. They ask, is addiction a choice? There are many arguments against calling addiction a disease. But the best argument I've ever heard is one I call the choice argument. The choice argument says that addiction can't be a disease because drug taking is a behavior and all behaviors are choices. With a strong enough threat, I can get the addict to stop their behavior in a way I just can't for real patients with real diseases. Diabetes, for instance. You can't put a gun to the head of the diabetic and say, okay, better bring that blood sugar down to 100 or I'll blow your brains out. It's not going to work. The choice argument draws a distinction between behaviors and symptoms. In the case of symptoms, those are part of a disease process. Free will plays no part. We don't hold patients responsible for their symptoms because they can't choose not to have them, and that's why punishing and coercing real patients is inappropriate. But drug taking is a behavior. 
all behaviors are choices, free will does exist, the addict is responsible for their behaviors because they can quit if they choose to. You just have to motivate them to make the right choice. That's the choice argument. That's the best argument I've ever heard against calling addiction a disease. And I think it's a darn good argument. But it has problems. And in the end, I think the choice argument is wrong because it fails to take into account some exciting new research about the brain. Research that shows that our capacity for choice is far more complicated and fragile than we ever imagined. Is addiction a disease or a choice? The short answer is addiction is a disease of choice. Now, that's really a debate for scientists and doctors anyway. It doesn't really concern us much. Well, kind of. First of all, our precious taxpayer money. Oh no. We have to pay for their rehabs and all that junk. Ugh. Anyway. Taxpayer money bullshit, I think that makes another video, but uh, whatever. What's important is how are we going to treat the addicts in our lives, our friends that are addicted, our family members who are, our family members who are addicted and have substance abuse problems. Do we treat them with contempt or with sympathy? Uh, going back to the diabetics example, we don't treat diabetics with contempt because they, can, they can't control their blood sugar. However, we may be treating our addicts with contempt because, hey, they can control their intake of drugs, but that's the disease. That's addiction. They can't. That's why, you know, if they could, it wouldn't be an addiction. Um, look, we have the stereotypical junkie that doesn't want to help themselves, whatever. We can't generalize that dude to everybody. Um, now, going back to this whole weakness of character thing, let's talk animals because we don't really judge animals in having character flaws and controlling themselves. I mean, that's what you call people that can't control themselves, they're their animals. <laughs> so, uh, let's talk about animals that get addicted to drugs. Now, we can train animals to self-administer. It's often done with rats. Uh, you can train a rat to press a lever and it's delivered with a that drug dose of, it could be morphine, meth, coke, whatever is being studied. Now, people critique this and say, well, you can't really compare animals and humans in that way because humans have jobs and families and things to risk. Whereas in an animal, well, it wouldn't be an addiction because an addiction is continuing a behaviour um, regardless of negative consequences. And if you're an animal being fed uh, and you're sitting in a box pressing a lever, well, there's no negative consequences if you if you keep going. I mean, they're probably bored and, hey, there's nothing else but to take heroin. So what they do to address this criticism is basically design some sort of a punishment for trying to access the drug. Uh, for example, electrifying the lever. So once the um, animal is hooked, the lever is electrified and most of the animals, most of the rats, thing, most of the rats will actually give up. You know, I don't want this cocaine anymore because I'm being shocked. So there you go, the criticism was right. However, there is a certain percentage of animals in a normal uh, lab population that will actually keep going. And this is very similar to humans. A lot of humans take drugs recreationally, but once they have to do something like start stealing to get their cocaine fix, they'll stop. But a certain percentage, those with substance abuse disorder, will keep going. Another thing um, these animal studies inform us about is not all substances are equal in addictiveness, I guess. For example, rats will not easily self-administer MDMA. In fact, a lot of papers say they don't self-administer MDMA. Just a couple of labs have managed to get it to work. And same with LSD. However, if you give them meth, they learn that pretty quick. Also, we can block certain brain processes from occurring and this will stop the self-administration of the drug. Of course, it depends on the drug being trained, whatever, blah, blah, blah. 
Also, there are genes that influence this. For example, uh, there's a gene found in humans, um, and it's found at a higher rate in smokers than non-smokers. So what this research group did is they uh, knocked in this gene to mice and um, temporarily, 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 can't fucking say that word, to rats. And what this did is basically the rats with, basically the mice with this gene uh, found it harder to quit um, self-administering tobacco. What happens is usually animals will self-administer um, the drug to a certain level. It may be satiety, thank you, I've had enough, that felt great, done. <laughs> or it could be simply um, aversive effects coming on. You know, like, if you eat food, you don't keep on going, you stop, because thank you very much, I've had enough, and if you keep on going, you feel sick. But the um, animals that have had this uh, gene knocked in actually went to a higher level. Alright, I'll stop there. Um, as much as I'd love to keep going on um, the behavioural neuroscience, uh, our pharmacologies are not equal, meaning that somebody is more likely to experience addiction based on what's going on in their brain, independent of character flaw. However, one might actually say that because we are our brains, our brain workings are our character flaws. i stop there. Substances are not all equal. Some are prone to addiction more than others. Some are prone to substance abuse and dependence more than others. Common sense tells us, well, one drug feels better than another drug. It's simple. I can't really comment on what drug feels the best and whatever because I don't have a huge drug resume. Um, but I mentioned MDMA before uh, with the animals. But now let's compare nicotine and MDMA. Nicotine is extremely addictive. MDMA, ecstasy, however, is not. But uh, MDMA is a euphorant, uh, nicotine is not really kind of, I mean, I don't know. But do keep in mind this whole thing is a bit subjective of what drug feels better. Um, so if it really was to do with that, you'd expect MT MDMA to be really addictive. But it's not, it has a low abuse potential. The problem with addiction is you'll start using whatever drug uh, to have some fun, to feel good. I think some of the people in Britney's videos commented, I think one interesting one is like if you go running, you wear running shoes to enhance the running and you know, but you can run without it. Same with like pot, you enhance the fun but you can have fun without it. Yep, and then what happens is you keep using it and then you can't have fun without it. I'm sorry, that's what happens. Um, you know, and maybe not even, I think it depends on who's really describing it. I mean, you can't have fun without drugs or you can't have normality without drugs, I guess. That combined with the compulsion to use it, again, um, makes for a good uh, disorder of choice really. So I suppose with the running analogy that would be like chopping your legs off and saying well I need the prosthesis to run. Compulsions are what drive addictions. Compulsions are difficult to fight but they actually can be overridden and this is I think another reason why people make these weaknesses of character comments um, is because compulsions can be overridden. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. The power of dopamine compels you. I actually think it's the opposite. Uh, being able to overcome an addiction is a sign of strength. There was a good video that I watched um, from somebody with trichotillomania. That's basically the compulsion to pull your hairs out. And she was saying, I can't stop it. It's kind of like an itch. You have to scratch an itch. So I guess maybe you guys can relate with that. An addiction is like an itch and you, you're not allowed to scratch it and you have to... <laughs> I don't know. I, oh, I notice how when you talk about scratching and itching, you get really itchy. Okay, um, that's enough.
So, we arrive at the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Now, in the comments, uh, what do you think? Is addiction a medical condition or is it a choice? Discuss. Thanks. Catch you later.